This is everything you need to know about the periodic table of elements for the chemistry regions in under five minutes. So the periodic table of elements sorts elements based on their atomic number, which is just the number of protons that is in that specific atom. So for example, carbon has an atomic number of six. That means that it has to have six protons. New, uh, nitrogen has an atomic number of seven, so it has to have seven protons. If you have you know, an atom of carbon, let's say that this is carbon right here, okay? and you change the number of electrons, it's still gonna be an atom of carbon. If you change the number of neutrons, it's also gonna be carbon. But if you add a proton, guess what? You're changing the atomic number, aka the number of protons, so you'll, uh, you'll end up with something that's to the right of it, okay, an element to the right of it. If you take away one proton, you'll be left with boron because you're subtracting one from the atomic number. What I'm trying to get at here is that the protons, the number of protons determine the type of element you have, okay? Next, the electron configuration. So the electron configuration is going to tell you how the electrons are arranged within this atom. So for an atom of carbon, it's going to have two electrons in its innermost shell and four electrons in its outermost shell. So if this is my carbon atom, this is my nucleus, I'll have two electrons in this innermost shell and I'll have one, two, three, and four electrons in its outermost shell, okay? So reading from left to right, the leftmost is in, uh, the left is the innermost and the right is the outermost shell. And this is how you can determine the total number of electrons within an atom, okay? Within a neutral atom. Remember, every single atom here is neutral, neutrally charged. So the number of the number of protons or the atomic number must equal to the number of electrons, okay? And if you just add up the electron configuration, you can find out the total number of electrons. And from the electron configuration, you can also determine the number of valence electrons because the outermost group or the outermost shell is the valence shell and however many electrons are located in the valence shell is going to tell you how many valence electrons there are. Okay, moving on, this number right here is the atomic mass. It's going to tell you how heavy the element is, okay? Specifically, how many grams are in one mole of that element. And finally, the oxidation states, you're going to use these to determine, well, you guessed it, the oxidation state of an element within a compound, okay? So these are not charges. Don't, don't look at this and say, oh, carbon must have a negative four charge. No. Everything here has a neutral charge. These are just numbers that you're gonna to use to determine how many electrons are gained or lost during a specific chemical reaction. I'll go over redox reactions in another video, okay? So that's all the information you get from a specific atom. If you want more information, you can flip to the next page of your periodic table of elements to get to table S. It tells you more information and more names. But essentially what I'm getting at here is everything is organized based on the atomic number and it has certain properties. And then we divide or split up these elements based on periods and groups. So groups are gonna be columns that go up and down. And periods are gonna be rows that go from left to right. So if a problem ever asks you what happens as you go across a period, just know you're moving from left to right. If it asks you what happens when you move down a group, know that you're going from up to down, okay? And you might notice here that every element in a group has the same number of valence electrons. So for example, lithium has one valence electron, sodium has one, potassium has one, rubidium has one. So it turns out that groups, elements in a group have the same number of valence electron, and thus they must have similar properties. So we call group one elements, right? Excluding hydrogen, alkaline earth metals. Oh, sorry, we call them alkali metals. Anything in group two, because they each have two valence electrons, we call alkaline earth metals, okay? Anything between group three and group 12, we call transition metals. Anything in group 17, we call halogens, because they have seven valence electrons. And finally, anything in group 18, we call noble gases, because they have eight valence electrons. They have a complete valence shell. They're the only elements that do have a complete valence shell, and as a result, they're highly unreactive, okay? So, Remember that the groups have similar properties. Those are the names of those groups, okay? But in general, right, in general, the periodic table of elements can be split up not only into groups, but into metals, metalloids, and non-metals, okay? So anything that's underneath or to the left of this blue line that I'm drawing right now is what we're gonna call a metal, okay? So anything here is a metal. So anything here is gonna be a metal. They're gonna have high boiling points, high melting points, uh, good conductors of electricity, this is a metal, this is a metal. Anything that is to the right of the line that I'm drawing right now is what we're going to call a metal, uh, a non-metal, okay? So the they have the opposite properties of metals, okay? And anything between these two lines is what we're going to call a metalloid. They have both metallic and non-metal properties, okay? And that's everything you need to know about the periodic table of elements.